Hey guys, it's been about a year since I got my CNC machine. It's a Snapmaker 2.0 and uh, you might have seen it in some of my previous videos. Now I'm not gonna do a full review of uh, this machine, there's plenty of these already on YouTube, but I do have a few general things to say about owning a hobbyist CNC machine. And these are things I didn't know until I got my CNC machine and started using it. If you're thinking of buying your first CNC machine, then this video is for you. Ok, number one, think about where you're gonna place the machine. It was January when I got the package with my CNC, but it wasn't until late February when I actually put it together. The reason was that I had to make space for it in my workshop, these are pretty big machines. In fact, I had to make an entire custom cabinet for the machine to go on top of it. You see, it is not a good idea to put a CNC machine on a $20 IKEA table that wobbles if you look at it the wrong way. My custom cabinet is made of a lot of material, it's very heavy, it's very solid, it doesn't shake, it doesn't wobble. Number 2. Let's talk about CNC machine specs and more importantly work area. At first, when I was looking at different CNC machines, I was looking at specs and I assumed that the physical dimensions of the device corresponded very closely to the size of the piece that you could cut with it. In reality, the cutting area is smaller, much smaller. My machine has a footprint of 50 by 50 centimeters, but it will not cut anything bigger than 35 by 32. And that's according to the people who actually made the machine, so these numbers are very optimistic. In practice, you still have to hold the piece you're cutting to the cutting bed, and that's gonna eat a few centimeters from every dimension. Number 3. When picking a CNC machine, take a look at the software it comes with if it comes with any software at all. Try to check if it's easy to use, if it's reliable, that sort of stuff. Unfortunately, the PC app that I got for my machine was terrible. It couldn't even save documents, so you can imagine how unfinished it was. The solution was to learn Fusion 360. Actually, I'm glad I did, because it's a very powerful piece of software. It's a bit intimidating at first, it's very complex, but once you get the hang of it, you can do some really cool stuff with its help. And it's free for hobbyists, with some limitations. Ok, so I had my CNC machine set up, I knew how to use it, I was actually starting to make cool stuff with it. It was saving me time in the workshop, but what amazed me the most was the precision that I got out of it. I was expecting accuracy of about plus or minus 1 mm, but this thing can cut accurately down to one tenth of a millimeter, which blew me away. In my opinion, the repeatability and the accuracy of the cuts are the two biggest advantages of owning a hobbyist CNC. Number 5. The dust is everywhere. One thing I didn't think about when getting my CNC machine was dust management, and it makes a lot of dust, especially with bigger projects. Every once in a while I have to pause the cutting process and clean everything with a small vacuum cleaner. That's one of the reasons why you don't want a machine like this in your bedroom, unless you have something like a special enclosure. Another reason why you don't want a CNC machine in your bedroom is the noise that it makes, especially with bigger bits. If you live in an apartment complex, your neighbors are not gonna like it. Thankfully, I have a dedicated workspace, and some of the walls there have acoustic panels to absorb at least some of the noise. Number 7 is a lesson I learned the hard way. You see, CNC bits are very fragile. That's because they're made of very strong, very hard metal, which lets them make very clean cuts. On the other hand, they break like biscuits. I think I've broken 4 or 5 of them already just by not being careful and dropping them on the floor. Even a small chip in the bit is enough to make it unusable, so when you get your CNC machine, make sure that you handle your bits carefully. Number 8. Speaking of breaking things, don't forget that a CNC machine is basically a computer controlled by a piece of code. What I mean is that your CNC machine will do exactly as it is told. If you have a mistake in your design, it will follow the instructions, even if that means breaking something. This for example is a result of my mistake, I did not set one of the numbers correctly, so the bit cut into the cutting bed. In other words, measure twice, cut once applies to CNC machines as well. Number 9 is a more general piece of advice. You see, my machine is a 3-in-1, it's a 3D printer, it's a CNC machine and it's a laser engraver. 
but I spent about 90% of the time using the CNC feature. If you're also considering buying a 2-in-1 or a 3-in-1 and you know that all that you need is a CNC machine, just get a proper dedicated CNC machine. Chances are that it's going to be much cheaper and you'll be getting better cuts. And number 10, and this might come as a bit of a surprise, but maybe you don't even need to buy a CNC machine. You see, after I got my machine, I realized that there are several businesses in town that will actually cut pieces for me. Of course, that service costs money, but at least where I live, it's not that expensive. That's why I think this might be the way to go for people who don't have the space, don't want to deal with dust, don't want to deal with broken bits. And not to mention that the machine they're going to use is going to be much better compared to anything that a hobbyist might own. Also, consider looking for a makerspace in your area where a CNC machine might be available. As an added bonus, you'll get to meet cool people who also like to make stuff, like yourself, I hope. Ok guys, thanks for watching and I really hope that this video has been helpful. If there's a question I didn't answer, you can leave it down in the comments and subscribe to my channel to never miss any of my future videos.